I'm the Commissar, and we're watching Forged Alliance Forever. The Neroxis map generator has done its dirty work, and no fewer than 12 players are gating in. We're going to see who's better at smashing each other in the face with big, fat robots. We have the West team, and we have the East team. Starting for the Eastern team and doing an unfortunate little dance there before he starts his factory, this is Opasnost of Clan Vern. We saw him last week, he's 1100 rated and UEF and he is in grass green. To his south we have another repeat offender from our previous cast. This is Amon Ra who is 1700 rated and also UEF and he is in white. And that notification, let's go and check on it. Down here at the bottom, we have Yotos. He's 1400 rated, he's a third UEF player for the Eastern team, and he has gone for a drone. Just two PGens and then straight to the drone, not even a factory. That's mad. He's playing in Cyan, we'll be following that drone in a bit, I think. Between those players, we have Lesnarchok, whom we also saw last week. It's like. They've all come back for more. He's a thousand rated and he is Eon and he's in red. Going away here into the distance, this is Way She Goes. 1600 rated and Seraphim in light green. And last but not least, the Eastern team's highest rated player is Sui, who is 1900 rated and Cybran in orange. On the Western team, I'm going to start here with Raelia, who's 1900 rated and UEF in Mauve, and I'm starting with him because he's already got a bomber route. He didn't even stop for an NG before getting that bomber route. It's heading straight for Opasnost, and it could do great work. In it comes. There is an AA tank here, an archer, but Raelia gets the bomb away. Boom! That's brutal! Raelia has, with just one bomb, killed every single engineer Opasnost had on the field, and he moves straight on for Ra. The first shot misses, but he gets a hover bomb off, he loses the bomber, but there is also an NG down for Ra, so that was a great bomber. Already in this reclaim field here for the Western team, we have Composite, who is 1100 rated and Eon, he's in yellow. And stuck into the mirrored reclaim field, up there with the way she goes, we have Skillisu, who is 2000 rated and also UEF. He is in baby pink. Behind him, heading forward, we have Gina Nar, who is 1400 rated and Seraphim in dark blue. Up here at the back, we have BJ, 1100 rated and another UEF player in Fico Brown. And last but not least, at the back here, this is Raelia Junior. We'll call him Junior. He is 1400 rated. He is the fourth UEF player for this team, the seventh in the game. And he is in Baby Blue. Quick look at the map. There was a huge heap of reclaim here, but these three comms have eaten it all up. Reclaim, reclaim, reclaim. Two channels, three comms, and two comms fighting it out. And speaking of three and two comms fighting it out, because we see Composite has retreated here, we've got the full complement coming in and splashing each other up here in the south. Gina and Skill fighting Wei, Sui, and Lesnichok. And Skill has taken quite the battering, but so has Wei. And will there be any kills here? I like Gina being able to target Wei, who's damaged, while also blocking the shots against Skill. And Gina brings in a bomber, and Wei's down into the red. Is he going to be able to kill Wei? Wei backs away and doesn't want to take any more damage. But he's still on only 2400 hit points, and that bomber's coming in. Skill in the yellow, but deep into the yellow. Gina in the yellow, but the comms are splitting up, and I think that that's the end of that fight. However, Gina doesn't think so. He's brought in his bombers, and they are showering hits down on Wei. 
Now Sui is putting up turrets here for Wei to fall back to. Nice dodging from Wei. And those turrets, those anti-air turrets might just save him. But they might not save him from this. In comes a ghetto gunship. A T1 transport full of labs. It's coming in from Railia and it's targeting Wei. Wei really has to just stop dodging and run for these turrets. And the turrets are hitting the air transport. But he's deep down 500, 400. He might not make it. The transport's nearly dead. But boom! Down goes Wei. And Railia agrees with me. Also saying boom. Nice. At just five minutes in, Wei has been ghetto gunshipped out of the game. That's mad, and I love it. Whew. Quick check, though, on the Ecos, and look how close they are. They are dead even, dead even, and we saw the total mass collector tick up at exactly the same time. So the teams have been expanding exactly as well as each other. That's great. Up here in the north, we see Opasnost and BJ preparing to fight it out. BJ has a little more spam, but he's sending it in first. And these are all Lobos I see on both sides. Sending it in first is a mistake, so it means Opasnost can just shoot them. And BJ will just lose his spam, whereas Opasnost's spam is back here, and he's not losing any of it. So I prefer the play there from Opasnost. He's also got Ra helping out, so I don't think these are going to get anything done. However, we do have a T2 upgrade going down for BJ, and that could be nice. However, Opasnos pushes forward again. And he's just eating up the wrecks of those Lobos he just killed. Waste not, want not. I approve heartily. Ooh. However, I'm seeing bomber support coming in from BJ. Will Opasnos be forced to fall back? He is down into the yellow. He drops back a bit, but I don't think he's under any real threat. Meanwhile, I love this radar here from Raelia. Those engineers can get in there but there's no way through by land here so he could just put this radar here safely and it will see all of Sui's base. That is a good play and I like it. Ooh and Gina points out that we have some TMLs going up from Yotos. Yotos whose drone is just coming back from harvesting some reclaim is obviously very excited about it. Did you see that little dance he was doing? Either way, he's putting up a couple of TMLs, so we'll see whether he's able to snipe anything with them. It could be that he won't, because um, Gina has pointed them out. Do Gina and Skill have any T2 build capacity? Well, now they do. And immediately TMDs are going up for Skill. That's good awareness. Well, that's good Gina's awareness, I guess. Up in the top, we have a Opasnos pushing forward again, but he does have to be careful. Sure, BJ can't come and hit him at the moment because BJ is upgrading, but when he finishes that upgrade, he will have more hit points and the ability to put T2 point defense. However, we can see here that Opasnos has jumped him to it with an engineer. He's just started in a point defense with an engineer. Who will win the point defense war? It seems like we've got the lead in it for Opasnos, and Ra is coming in with his commons, a lot of engineers to help out. We also have T2 land production from Opasnost, who is bringing in a Mongols, and he's gonna finish first, which might just deny this triad from BJ. No, it won't deny it, but he'll have it up first, and they open fire on each other. And the fight commences. Oh, but meanwhile... Yotos has fired his TMLs, and I think they're going to be going for Skill's Com. There are these TMDs here, but will there be enough? And Skill is already damaged. Over here, BJ has lost his PD. The TMD, the TMD takes out one, but Skill takes a hit before his shield comes up, and he has to get dodging. Over here, I think BJ might have to fall back because there's about to be a second PD. Skill gets the shield up. He's going to be safe. Every time BJ is getting a turret up, it's just dying. And with two T2 PDs and a shield under construction for Opasnost and Ra, 
I don't know how much traction BJ is going to get. He does have composite helping out, putting up an oblivion, but look at this. He's just every turret he puts up, it just dies like within a second. He's going to have to fall back. He is bringing bombers in, and they are doing some damage, but they should have been targeting the shield, not the not the turret. However, he does retarget them on this T2 mechs from uh, Pasnost, and I think he's going to take it out, which is pretty nice. Maybe. Not quite. Yes, he is. Cool. Down here, we can see that Yotos has reclaimed his TMLs. He doesn't think they're going to be any more use, and I kind of agree with him. And we have the Corsair wave coming out from Sui. And Skill, who took damage earlier, is out in the open. Now is the perfect time. They come in. And the first pass takes Skill into the red. He's dodging. However, there is air defense from the Western team and he gets under his shield. However, the Corsairs don't stop yet. But what's this? Raelia has three stingers, each carrying a Sparky, of all things. A Sparky, and he's going to land them in the... He's not... Are you kidding me? All three stingers and all three Sparkies died. Meanwhile, though, the shield is down, and skill is back down into the red, so let's focus him. Just 1,600 hit points remaining, but the air defense is on point. Are there any more Corsairs coming? Skill needs to get under the shield. I think he's safe. Nice. There, well, there is another Corsair coming, but it's not going to get any traction with all that going on. BJ can't outrange those T2 point defences with his own T2 point defence, but he can with artillery. And rather than shoot at this firebase, he's shooting over it, trying to hit the stuff belonging to a Pasnost behind it. And as if that weren't enough, he's starting the tactical missile on his comm. That could be fun. With his comm up here, he could range quite a lot with that. And of course, the comm is a walking tactical missile launcher. He could. There's ATMD here, but these are all pretty vulnerable. I would like to see that being um, being taken out. And we have T3 land on the field for Ra. Do we have that for any other player? Yes, we do. Junior has T3 land. As for air, we have it for Gina, but... Nobody on the Eastern team has T3 Air. So that could that could be a huge advantage for the Western team. I'm not sure I like this from Yotos. He's going from um, Lesnichuk, actually. That's Lesnichuk, not Yotos. He's going for the advanced range upgrade, and he's got sensors. But without the speed upgrade, when you're against T3 land, and looks like we're going to have some from skill as well, that could be pretty dangerous, and I don't like it. Spearheads coming forward from Ra. Are they going to be able to break this firebase belonging to BJ? Spearheads are the whole point of them is to break firebases. There's only one at the moment, but I expect to see more coming up. However, these clink hammers might be able to defend against them. And BJ, with a tactical missile loaded, he comes forward. He's got to be careful. He's taking some fire there. Just picking up a bit of reclaim. And he falls back. Maybe he wasn't going for the tactical missile launch after all. Oh, but you know who is? I see a cheeky tactical missile here from Lesnichok heading over the cliff. Might, is it going for this? I think it might be. Boom. 
Cap T2 Mex taken out. Nice play. But this could be a game changer. With T3 on the field, there are now Ravages up for Amon Ra. And these are T out range, but these turrets do not. And he should be able to creep this base down. BJ also has access to Ravages when he's at T3, but he is not at T3 yet. His spearhead got taken out though, so there's that at least. However, the shield goes down, and this could be a chance for those artillery to take out that Ravager. There are also bombers coming in. What are the bombers targeting? The shield would be a great choice. But again, they're not targeting the shield. Why is that? I don't know. The shield stays up and it's about to pop back up again. Artie rains down near it but it doesn't take it out and the shield comes back up and the Ravager stays up. Skillisu has also gone for spearheads and they're attacking this firebase building belonging to Yotos and Lesnachok. And of all the places to get Raz on your com, I'm not sure I like that for Lesnachok. However, it seems like there's enough to defend for now. Many more spearheads though, and that won't be the case. Back in the north, Opasnos has come forward, and he's under point defence fire. Has he come too far forward? This mobile shield is doing a good job of defending against the Ravager, yet another attempt to put up a triad for BJ is foiled. What's Opasnos doing? But he's still taking fire. The shield, go the shield goes down as the artillery hits, and suddenly Opasnos could be in trouble. There's another shield here. All that has to do is go up. I say all, but that's quite an ask. Opasnos falls back. One of the artillery pieces is down. And the fight goes on. Why is he doing this? I don't get it. I know I'm focusing a lot on him, but that's because he's doing a weird little dance in front of T2PD, heavily shielded T2PD. Is he going? He's down to the red. I do not understand. What's his purpose? Why does he just not fall back? And the Ravager's down. And suddenly, Western team are free to resume their creep. The second artillery did fall, but BJ is rebuilding it. And these missiles are coming in, and the TML! Is that going to get him? Is that TML going to get a Pasnost? I will tell you, my dudes, yes it is! Boom! After his inexplicable dancing, Opasnost is taken out by a TML from BJ's com. And I guess Sui is gonna inherit his stuff. And so he does. Now BJ's remember that TML, he's gonna get some more shots off. Sui gives it over to Ra. And Ra promptly takes a hit from the tactical missile going deep into the red. A tiny bit of damage and he's gonna be out. He's running away, he's being pung. Does the Western team have anything they can do to stop it? However, I do not think they do. So one com out and a very close shave escape for Amon Ra. And that tactical missile launcher is just going to start clearing up things like Mexes. Slight eco lead for the Western team, we'll see if that TML can build on that. In the south those spearheads have cracked this base. I mean, that, uh, the whole job of a spearhead is to crack fire bases, and they have not let us down. Lesnachok falling back. Yotos already well back here. But this could be the game changer for the Eastern team. There is a monkey under construction for Sui. He's assisting it quite heavily. He's got a decent lot of ego, having inherited um, where she goes stuff, even though he's given a personal stuff to Ra, and so he is going to get that monkey up. What will Skill be able to do about it? 
BJ pushing in with Lobel to take advantage of the damage he did. There are T2 point defences here, but with these mobile missile launchers out from Composite, I don't think they'll last very long, and Lobo's in enough numbers can do damage. If they came over here, that would be good, because killing all this bird power would be pretty fantastic, and I think that BJ is going to be able to do just that, because what's Ra actually got to defend? His entire defensive line was up front. He has got a T3 HQ back here, and that could be building... It's building Spearhead at the moment. I don't like that. I think he needs Titans to be coming forward. However, we just saw Sui finishing that monkey, but I want to see whether this push is going to do damage to Amon Ra. His comms naked, his comms badly hurt. How's he going to defend? Is he gonna, has he got point defences? Has he got anything? He's putting up point defences here, and I think that'll be enough, but now these guys are just getting a run by. Where's the Titans? He needs the Titans. There we go. He's now changed Titans after getting the spearhead out, but he's going to lose a lot of mexes. And don't worry, I'm keeping an eye on that monkey on the minimap. When it actually goes in, we'll go and look at it. But right now I'm more interested in all the damage that... Ra is taking in his base. He's losing multiple mexes. He's lost mexes here, he's lost mexes here, and BJ is still launching tactical missiles and getting work done. And the eco difference is beginning to pay off. Look at that, they're a hundred ahead now, the Western team. And why is why is Sui wait? That's what Sui's waiting for. He's gonna go in with two monkeys at once. It's double the pleasure, baby, triple the fun. And if he can bring them in together, that might be enough to break skill issue. Though skill issue does have an awful lot of point defense, ravages and triads here to back it up, as well as Percy. So two monkeys is a good choice, but looking at the level of point defense here, I'm not sure that's enough. Skill has the shield on his comm, but he might still want to retreat just in case that isn't enough though. how many mexes Ra's lost. These guys are now being taken out by titans but he's lost all these mexes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And he had lost that one previously. That was So that was at least nine mexes cleared up by a little raid and I think they'll take a tenth. However, here come the monkeys. They're meeting up. Does Skill know about them? He actually does not. Well, now he does. And rarely joining BJ in the tactical missile. But right now, we've got to worry about these monkeys. But this is an immense amount of firepower. And as if that weren't enough, we've got gunships, willful gunships coming in from Gina. And Boom! One of the monkeys is dead. It's just straight up dead in like a second. That's crazy. Skill is taking direct fire from the monkey, but and his shear goes down. He loses only his first tick of health before the second monkey is taken out. That's the most turtly defense I've like, ever seen. Two monkeys taken out in a matter of seconds before they could kill the cop. He did lose the mechs, but even so, that's an amazing defense and he can more than rebuild that mechs with the mass from those monkeys. What have we got up north? BJ's comp still with that TML, still doing beautiful damage. This would be a nice TML target if they can take out the land HQ for Ra. Oh, but there is a TMD here. However, oh, there's two. That's probably enough to defend it. Hmm. But, TML is a one thing, Junior here has finished the Billy. You ready for some Billy Boy action, my dudes? I hope you are, because we've got one. And what's this? Oh, well, do you know what's a good answer to a tactical nuke? It's an actual nuke. We have a nuke under construction here from Yotos.
quite a lot of bird power going down on it. But Yotos with 149 eco, it's going to take him a little while to get it done. And there's a bit, but that came from Railia. Railia also has a Billy. Lovely. There's a Mega now up for Sui. But boom, the Mega's only barely damaged because Billy's only do like 10k damage. But all the build power's dead, the shielding's down, and Sui is running away. That Mega's going to be something worth watching. But we've got double Billy action from Raelia and Raelia Julia. And I am all here for it. It's going to be great. You know, I love me a little bit of Billy play. Meanwhile, though, those monkeys, one of them's been eaten, and the other's almost been eaten with a huge horde of NGs. The Mega comes forward, and it can do great work bombarding this, but a Mega does not outrange Ravagers. So, we're going to have to be very careful here for Sui, who is throwing up TMDs to prevent another Billy getting through. However, one of our Billy boys, Junior, has just dropped here and the TMDs don't block his line of fire here. So I like that a lot. The Mega is being forced to fall back. It got within range of the Ravagers and it's just running like a little cowardly custard. And Skiller finishes a fat, fat Boy, which also outranges the Megas. Still pretty much stalemate in the north, thought we'd have a quick look at it. But watch this, Raelia is also bringing his com in to join Junia. And that we have the two Billy Goat Scruff facing off against the troll under the bridge. Who's the troll under the bridge? I guess it has to be the nuke from Yotos. And he's not alone in building a nuke, we also have a nuke going up for Lesnichog. Two real nukes versus two Billy nukes. Let's see who's able to do more damage. Are the Billy Boys loaded yet? Yes, they are. And they've got a stealth field generator. What are they going to shoot? Come on, my dudes. Don't disappoint me. Meanwhile, that Mega is deep into the red. And the Billy's launch. The Billy's launch. And where are they going? They're going for Ra's main base. And there are TMDs and I think that's going to stop at least one of them. One of the billies is shot down, but I think the other's going to get through and it's going to hit his land factory. Is it going to be enough? Cab 750 hit points remaining. Just one more hit and that's going out. However, that tactical missile from BJ is just going to hit the shield and not achieve anything. That was so close and that could have really hurt um, Ra's production. Ra also working on a fatty if it was able to hit. But really, with a huge amount of eco, he's also got the Raz on his com. Just fires again and I think that's going to get through and take it out. I say I think, I hope, because that would be pretty funny if it did. No, it doesn't. It's just shot down. But Junior obliges by aiming here and that might take out the TMDs. Nope, it too is taken out. Meanwhile, the Mega, still badly hurt, is coming in, but a Mega is outranged by a Fat Boy. Sure, it's supported by a GC, but unless it surprises the Fat Boy, does the Fat Boy know about it? Absolutely, it does. Then the Mega will just die if the Fat Boy kites away. And indeed it does look at that, that Mega is 100% going down. I say that, but, it might, but the fatty may be targeting the wrong XP. Multiple Billies. Boom! One of them hits Sui's forward base, taking out the TMDs, and that's now open. Meanwhile, Composite finishes a GC, but we'll have to check on that in a moment. The Mega is down, and that GC for Sui has to just run away. Tactical Missile coming out to take advantage of the gap from BJ and he look at this, he is smacking these mexes for um for Sui. But Sui is quickly throwing up TMDs and shields and he might be able to defend again. Another Billy out from Raelia. 
Is it going to be able to get in there and do the damage? Yes, it is. Nice. Junior, you need to help out. He's not loaded yet. Look at the speed with which Rayleigh is loading. That is mad. Sui's RT is now firing, but there are now two fatties to stop. And Rayleigh just keeps on firing. And look at that, both of Sui's HQs out in one fell swoop and suddenly Sui's production is completely crippled. That is amazing play from our Billy Goats Gruff and they take out a lot of Sui's eco as well as his production. Sui is in a boatload of problems. Ra's got a fat boy but he hasn't got the power to support it. He's trying to put up a PJ and he does. But he's got to be careful because it can't really fire over here and this so his fat boy might escape but will Ra himself escape? Does he know that there's an actual literal GC walking towards him? He knows there's an army coming towards him but he doesn't know that's a GC. He might be in for a bit of an unpleasant surprise. If it comes but the billies are firing again and Ra's not running I think Ra is about to actually straight up die and it's Lesnar Chops HQ which is now in the line of fire but Yotos fires his nuke at the two Billy boys. Down goes Lesnar Chocks HQ, down goes Ra. He wasn't killed by suicide, he died in the explosion of the... I've forgotten the words, of the T3P gen. And the invasion force goes on. Meanwhile though, we can see experimental assault bots coming in here, but we have to worry about that nuke. Bang! The Billy Boys go up in smoke. Both Raylia and Julia are taken out in a nuke. That is marvellous. Composite continues forward as a chicken from Scale and a GC from Sui meet and duke it out. The chicken isn't focusing the GC and the GC has more DPS anyway. At least in single direct fire like that. And so I think the GC's going to win, but there's Fatty Fire bombarding it. Meanwhile, there are an awful lot of gunships from Lesnar Chop focusing the GC, but I don't know if it's going to save any of this eco. Down goes the chicken, but the GC is just taking a lot of Fatty Fire, and I don't know if it's going to get very far. How's that nuke from Lesnar Chop doing? Well, it's loaded. What's he going to do with it? but we've got to follow this GC advance. The GC tries to run away, but the fatties catch it and kill it. And there's now nothing here to stop the fatties from skill. Now, Yotos is bringing in a few Percy's and Titans to defend, but against the GC, even the damaged one, it's going to take a miracle to keep them in the game. And Lesnichok is just dead because look at the immense amount of Harbies coming in with Composites GC. Maybe that's the miracle to keep them in the game. We have a defensive nuke out from Lesnar Chokas' last act before he dies. It goes in and it's going to hit here, but it's not going to do enough damage to kill the GC, I don't think. In fact, it doesn't really kill much at all. Most of this army still survives. There are ravages going up here in defence, but everything looks more and more like a last ditch desperate play as the GC just walks in. And the nuke from Yotos is, is not targeted. Yotos himself is targeted. Boom. He goes down and that hurt a lot. The GC finally dies in the explosion, but let's zoom out for a second. What is left for Eastern team? They, the Western team have four times their eco. They have four times the player count. Now, last week we saw Salaman come back from a situation almost, but not quite this bad. And, okay, not even almost this bad. This is absolutely crushing. 
I don't think Sui has a way back from this. Sui all on his own with a quarter of the other team's eco. Wait, those arty down here next to the one surviving nuke which he still got, those aren't Sui's. They're BJ's. Those are BJ's Lobos and they're firing on the nuke. Are they going to take it out? That would be hilarious if they did. We'll check on it in a moment. Anything else interesting going on? Okay, that there's a Mavor. And that Mavor is about to finish. That's hilarious. Skirstew, having inherited Junior's base, has built a Mavor. And the nuke is now taking damage from those T1 RT. The shield goes down. The nuke takes a couple of hits. It's not very near loaded. These T1PDs, of course, can't do anything. RT outranges them, and they're on the other side of the nuke. Well, defensive nuking 5 T1 RT would be hilarious. This gunship arrives just too late, and the nuke goes down. A few bricks are creeping in. And the Mavor finishes. Out of all the ways to end this game, is it going to be the Mavor? Is it going to be the Fatty? Is it going to be the Bricks? Is it going to be the Strats? There are a lot of ways to end this game. So he's trying to work on his solo ripper gunship. I'm not sure that's... I think that's... Hopeful, shall we say. Which of the... I think that... There are quite a lot of ways to end this game. In come some Strats. But they see Sam's and back off. However, the Mavor hits the shield. And the Mavor hits Sui. Boom. Was it all down to the Billies? I'd like to think so. It would be a bit of a stretch to say it were down to the Sparkies, because they all died. Wow. Was it a close one? Honestly, no, not really. But was it a fun one? Absolutely. Why build a real nuke when you can build a Billy nuke? Well, tell me about your best Billy plays in the comments below. While you're down there, please don't forget to like, subscribe and obey. I'm the Commissar and I will see you next time.